All right, uh, we're talking about electric potential difference, uh, something that you've probably uh, heard many a times in your life uh, as voltage. Um, just so that we're clear, um, they are the same thing. Electric potential difference is the same thing as voltage. So um, throughout the course of um, the unit, where we're working on this kind of stuff, um, you might just say, what's the potential difference? Um, what's the electric potential? Um, you might just see PD, and you might see voltage. All of these things are synonymous. So um, just make sure that you understand that right off the bat, all those things are exactly the same. Now, I do find that, um, especially with electricity, it's harder to understand at times because it's harder to see. So I'm going to try to work a lot with some analogies. Um, so the first one here, I'm going to, I'm going to compare um, gravity to electricity to kind of help us out. Okay. Um, so <clears throat> one thing, and gravity is fairly uh, understandable for, for most of you. Um, if we have a book at a given height, the force that brings that book down is the force of gravity, which is m times g. Okay. If we rearrange this particular equation for g, it would be the force per unit mass, or newtons per kilogram. And we've defined that value g as the gravitational field strength. Okay? Now this is pretty easy to understand, I think, for the most part. So let's take a look at electricity for a second. Okay? Um, with electricity, we're, we're not worrying about material objects like books and, and, and the earth and stuff like that. We're dealing with charges. Okay, now right off the bat, just so that you're aware, charges get the symbol Q, little Q. Okay, um, so this is a positive charge, and it's being placed in between um, a plate of positive charges and a plate of negative charges. Um, this is essentially um, the basis for like a battery. You, you get a bunch of positive charges on one end and a bunch of negative charges on the other end. So this is kind of the that what we're looking forward to here in a second. And then there's a distance between these two plates. So if a positive charge was in here, it would experience a force because I think we, from you know earlier days in science, you should know that positive charges get repelled by positive charges and attracted to negative charges. So it would experience a force. We're going to call it an electrical force, just like this was a gravitational force. And that would be equal to, well, instead of a mass, it's acting on a charge, so Q. And instead of a gravitational field, it's being acted on in an electrical field. So you see the, the parallels here between f of g is equal to mg and f of e is equal to qe. Okay. Um, if we rearrange this for e, you get e is fe over q. That would be the force per unit charge. This was the force per unit mass. Now we've got force per unit charge. The um, units for charge are coulombs. Okay, and we'll talk about the spelling of that later, but that's coulombs. Okay, so over here we've got gravitational field strength, and here we have electrical field strength. Okay, so far so good. All right, so let's talk about what happens when these objects move in their fields. Well, if a book moves vertically along the same direction of the gravitational field, we say that work is done. The same thing could be said about an object moving in an electrical field. If it moves in the direction of the field, then work is being done on that charge. Now, we've got some basic formulas for work. Okay? Now, I've written the IB version here, uh, F parallel to S. Um, or the AP version, or, or just regular physics version. Uh, work is the force parallel to the displacement. Um, same thing. It doesn't really make a difference. Okay, But no matter what, if it moves parallel to its field, then we're having work done. Okay. So work is also defined as a change in energy. Okay. But what is the type of energy that's changing here in both cases? Okay. Um, in the gravity, gravity's case, um, if you move in that gravitational field, then your gravitational potential, so for IB it's EP, uh, AP it's UG, okay, uh, your, your gravitational potential is changing, okay, which is equal to MGH. 
in an electrical field, the work done or that change in energy isn't equal to the same thing here. It's equal to QE times delta D. Okay, now where am I getting this from? Um, just look at the, the formula for work here. Work is a change in energy. The force for gravitational is equal to mg, so I bring the mg down. And then the displacement is whatever the height was there, and it's the height here. Okay. In this one, work, and I, I've just left it as work because it tends to stay with a w for most of the time. Um, the force parallel in this case is the electrical force, which is qe. That's why the qe is down here. And then it's the distance between those particular plates, which is delta d. Okay, so the next part is if we do a little rearranging, and this is a little new, we haven't really talked too much about this, but if I rearrange this particular equation, gravitational potential um, equation, so that the mass is on one side, this value of g delta h is often referred to as gravitational potential difference. Okay, um, not that important, but uh, it says at the Earth's surface, uh, it's 9.8 joules per kilogram. Okay, that's the value of the gravitational difference, joules per kilogram. Um, over here in the electrical side, if I rearrange this and bring the charge, which is very much analogous or analogous here to the the mass, bringing that down. If I bring the charge down, I get work. Okay, joules per charge per coulomb. That this electrical field times the distance between it is referred to as the voltage or the potential difference or the electrical potential difference okay that's what voltage is it is the work per unit charge on an object so it has a little easier formula here instead of having to have to have uh, e times delta d you can just replace it with v now i would also like to mention that V can equal E delta D. You could have that in there. Okay. Um, but if voltage is the work per unit charge, then the unit, units for work is joules. Units of charge is coulomb, so joules per coulomb, or better known as a volt. Okay, voltage has a sweet unit. It's the volt. It makes it a lot easier to remember. Um, you might see in certain textbooks or or in problems and stuff like that um, you might see that work referred to as a change in potential if you hear that change remember that work is a change in energy so change in potential that should be the dead giveaway that it's really talking about work so these things again are are the same type of deal okay all right now these charges and things that we talk about, or this this change in potential, um, can be very small numbers. Charges and things like that um, carry a very small value. So one way that um, we can make it a little more, or use some numbers that are a little larger values, is we have something called an electron volt. Okay, and an electron volt is defined as the work done when a charge equal to one electron charge is taken across a potential difference of one volt. So just a real quick refresher here with, with our equations. Voltage is the work per unit charge. Therefore, work is voltage times charge. Okay. So again, it says the work done. So an electron volt is the work, which also means it's, it's very similar to energy, yes? <laughs> Okay, so work is voltage times charge. So if it's the charge uh, uh, of an electron across a potential difference of one volt, one volt times the charge of an electron, and this can be found in your packets under the constants pages, um, one volt times 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th, that is what one electron volt is. So if we took one electron across a two volt uh, potential difference, then you would have two electron volts. If we took three electrons across a five volt potential difference, then we'd have 15 electron volts. 
Okay, so this is just a, a slightly easier way so that we don't have to deal with things like to the negative 19th all the time. We can use nice numbers instead. Okay, all right. 